Have you ever wondered what happens to new cars that just don't sell? Have you ever walked down car lots thinking, look at this extensively long car line and are each and every one of those vehicles going to sell? The bottom line is up until about 2020, the answer was no. Since then, things have shifted a little bit, but now we're back into an evolution and a time where vehicles are now building excess inventory and we're back to pre-levels of 2020, where in fact, a lot of the vehicles that you're looking at in those car lots are literally not selling. They're not selling for various reasons. New technology, the latest models are coming out, the manufacturers, that's the factories, are putting big pushes on pushing that new product, that new product line to each one of the representative dealers. Now those dealers are your reach, that's your interface to buying a car. That's right, manufacturers, for example, like Ford or BMW or Chevy, none of them can sell you a vehicle directly. They have to go through a dealership network. That's a dealer protection act and of course, it enables you to have that interface and somebody, a person in front of you to have that conversation with, a negotiation, and it leaves a little bit there for a business. And clearly it's a middleman and there's a business structure that is very profitable for many different groups. And you're probably wondering, almost every single manufacturer sells and pushes to the dealer who then in turn pushes it to you or sells you the vehicle. With Tesla being one of those rare exceptions, it follows its own sets of rules because Tesla is more in fact a tech company rather than an automotive company first. So back to the big question, where do these cars go if they just don't sell? And before we unravel this whole storyline, be sure to hit that subscribe button, building the channel because remember, if you care about saving your money, the cost of living crisis is having an impact on you, then you're definitely gonna wanna follow this channel because I dive deep into the latest automotive news, the trends, the opportunities for great discounts and buys, and some of the pitfalls to avoid. So this is definitely the place you're gonna to wanna to go. So let's get into the story. Have you ever asked yourself the question, why is the general advice is go negotiate at the end of the model run? Go to negotiate during holiday season or the end of the year, or even at the end of the month? Well, the facts are simple. It's because that's when there's generally the new floor plan costs are going to be incurred upon that dealer. Now, floor plan costs are nothing more than a credit cost. If you're buying a car yourself and you're going down, you don't have the entire money, you have to borrow some of the money from the bank or a lender to make payments on that vehicle that you wanna buy. The same thing more or less applies for dealers. The dealers buy these vehicles essentially from the manufacturer. They market and they push those product lines as required for the specific marketplace. Now, some vehicles naturally are better sellers than others, and it takes very little marketing. It takes very little more than to park that vehicle on the front of the lot or in front of the doors to the car lot or up on the hill, and people will basically rush in to buy that new vehicle. But other vehicles don't sell so well, and they often sit, and then they sit for a lot longer. And as we roll over the calendar dates, when we roll into the next month, we know that those floor plan costs, essentially credit costs, are going to be incurred one more month. Because yes, dealers, when you look at this vast expanse of cars on these mega lots, the majority of those vehicles, if they're within a year or two years old, are incurring monthly floor plan costs, which essentially is another car payment. So the longer that vehicle sits, the more cost to the dealership that it becomes. So as these vehicles sit longer and longer, and once we exceed 90 days, then it starts to become a very much a burden to the dealer. And dealers don't like to lose money, so the sooner they get the car on the lot, the sooner they like to send it down the road. And these dealers are stuck between a rock and a hard place. Here you have the manufacturer pushing the next, the latest and greatest product line. When you're at the end of the year, they're already pushing the next year's models. Now, if you have a pile of inventory that is current model year about to become obsolete or outdated, then obviously you have to push a lot harder and that's why you're going to find hungrier dealers to sell those last year's models. But those vehicles don't always sell. So now, unfortunately, dealers continue to make these payments, continue to incur losses, and that gives you, the buyer, a great opportunity to get yourself a deal. But in doing so, all these costs continue to build and build and build. Now, it doesn't take very long. You can do scrub some searches on the internet. Car gurus, for example, 
and you can filter down and find lots of brand new inventory 2022 model years. Those are the types of vehicles already floor plan costs are come and gone and a lot of these dealers after a couple of years end up buying that vehicle outright. That's one way to sort of move the vehicle along. In many cases, a lot of those vehicles that aren't selling particularly well wind up getting scooped up. The dealers decide, okay, we need a demo, we need a vehicle even for our fleet, or we need a vehicle even for a loaner for the service department. So what they end up doing is purchasing that vehicle. It looks good on their books because it's another vehicle sold, but at the end of the day, it's another vehicle off the lot, technically. Then it gets used for another six months to a year, lightly used, puts another five, 10, 15,000 miles on it. And then after a year or so, they flip it on the used car market as a late model, slightly used, that they can actually sell and it's not adhering to the floor plan costs and there's no additional stress and pressures for the dealer to move that vehicle. So that's where some of these vehicles actually wind up in the interim. If they're not able to sell and they're sitting in the back and many dealers consider them a dog and those vehicles just don't generally do all that well, like I said, they tend to scoop those up and repurpose them. Now, if that doesn't work and they can only consume so much of those vehicles, then what they end up doing is offering spiffs or special incentives for a lot of the workers, sales staff. As well, a lot of these dealerships end up coupling up with a lot of corporations. And they'll go, for example, like IBM or some other large corporation and say, we have special Ford discounts or we have special General Motors discounts to IBM. And they'll go to that company and they'll say, we'll offer up a special discount. They generally sell vehicles that aren't particularly well suited for mass sales. Not all that popular. You're going to find lower trim levels, mediocre trim levels, colors that are boring, whites, the grays, and vehicles that generally are not that popular are the ones that are literally going to be heavily incentivized to sell to other of these vendors as, as staff deals and discounts. But wait. There's actually more incentives for the dealers to sell their vehicles in short order. Remember, we talk about the floor plan costs, essentially the cost of borrowing money to have that car on the lot. They don't own them outright. It's a floor plan cost. But as the car or truck or SUV sits on a car lot for a significant amount of time, it starts to break down. Have you ever heard the term lot rot? It's a real phenomenon and it seems to be more prevalent than it ever has been because of the excess inventory that's building. Some manufacturers, for example, like Ram and Stellantis products, Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, have excess inventory sold at a higher dollar amount means a lot of these vehicles are sitting and you're going to find a lot of these particular brands sitting for long periods of time not selling. So this phenomenon called lot rot becomes a real problem. As a vehicle becomes a year old, two years old, other things start to happen. The tires start to wear. Believe it or not, as they sit, they start developing flat spots. Hot asphalt can develop a permanent flat spot in those tires. Remember, if you have a three-year-old vehicle that's brand new on the lot and it sells, those vehicle tires are really only rated to keep on the vehicle safely for eight to 10 years, in which case then they should be discarded. So you've already trimmed a few years off of the life of that vehicle for the tires. And people a lot of times overlook that fact. Batteries. They have a limited shelf life and as the vehicle sits longer, batteries wear out, they drain down and sometimes they won't come back. Sometimes batteries just won't last and it's even more important when you're talking about manufacturers with these big electric vehicle batteries, for example, hybrids as well as BEVs, battery electric vehicles like you'll find in Teslas and beyond. These batteries have a limited shelf life and if you don't keep the charge going to them, they will deteriorate. And so that's another thing that starts taking a toll on vehicles that become a year, two years, even three years old. Fluids, even if you're not putting miles on a vehicle. That's why they tell you warranties or service intervals are, for example, oil service might be 5,000 miles or 12 months. That's right, most of these dealers are not taking the time to do these oil services, these fluid changes. As they assume that these vehicles are brand new, the reality is these ups and downs in temperature swings just means that these oils and these fluids in these vehicles are deteriorating with age and with time. So these vehicles sit longer and longer and then there is the added expense or expectation by a buyer to buy a brand new old stock three-year-old vehicle 
that there may be some additional cost to the dealer if the particular buyer, which the savvy buyer, if you listen to this channel, are going to walk in there and ask those difficult questions. Have you done the fluid changes? Where's the battery at? I don't like those tires because they're already three years old. Those now start to cost dealers extra money and they don't want to have those difficult conversations. So then if they're not selling and they happen to start building some time, the inventory is building, the next model lines are coming out. Now you have a vehicle that's sitting there for a year, maybe even two years. Remember, it's 24 here at the end of 24 and we're still seeing car lots with some brand new old stock 21s and 22s. It's not uncommon for Stellantis products as many other manufacturers. Now, two years ago, this wasn't a problem. Shortages meant that everything was sold. Every piece of inventory was sold, but we're starting to build inventory. Chip shortages are no longer an issue, and a lot of these car lots are filling up by the brim. Now, we have to think about, okay, as these car lots are filling up, people aren't buying, there are certain models that aren't popular, they get shuffled around, now, the management often brings the salespeople and try to have their conversations, try to motivate the salespeople, give them kickbacks, try to get them to push customers into these poor selling vehicles. Hey, you might want to look at this. You can get a great discount. We're offering 0% on that 2022. We're offering 1.9%. So immense finance rate opportunities exist often with some of the older vehicles that might be brand new old stock. They might give you cash back incentives or just massive discounts right off the top. This isn't uncommon where we're seeing brand new Rams, what they're called the Ram Classic now, selling for essentially eighteen, nineteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 off of sticker. And that's because they're not selling. They're also on an older chassis. And it's time Ram has decided to move on and sell the latest and the greatest. They're now into a Hurricane twin turbo straight six engine. And now vehicles like that old Ram Classic just become obsolete and they'll become even more difficult to sell. So that's where the dealers and the management decide, start pushing the salespeople, push this product, push it. We need to get this vehicle sold. I'll give you an extra kickback, an extra 2,500 or an extra thousand dollars. And I'm hearing often flat rates just to get the vehicle sold. There may not be a lot in it for the management, but they already know the running costs of holding, holding on to that vehicle are too far and too exceeded. So they want to get that vehicle and they'll highly incentivize their staff to push those vehicles down the road. Time goes on, that vehicle doesn't sell, where does it go from there? Now often the dealers start engaging other dealers. You might reach one GM dealer, reaches out to another GM dealer, maybe in the same city. They might have conversations with other GM de dealers in other cities and say, hey, do you have a, a need for this vehicle? They might start reaching out or do a trade of some sort to get that vehicle moving, maybe a fresh set of eyes, maybe a different jurisdiction, different city, might be all it takes to move that vehicle. If for some reason that vehicle still does not sell, the next action often is the auction house. Now there's often these dealer auctions, and I personally worked at a dealer auction. It was a Ford factory repossession and lease buyback dealer auction. I worked for a long period of time with that group. I understand the ins and outs. Joe Public can't get access to that unless you happen to be a buddy with somebody that is in the biz, but there are some great deals there. The unfortunate part is everybody knows Black Book and the value of these vehicles. And if you show up at the auction with a brand new old stock vehicle with an undesirable spec and it's a little bit too dated, the majority of the other buyers likely aren't going to gravitate to that. Now you might get lucky, you might get another buyer or another dealership picking that up just to relist on their lot and it might even be relisted as a demo or a slightly used because now it's sold to another buyer. You could technically deed it that way and now it's considered a used vehicle. And that way might be the only way to cash flow that vehicle and get some of your money back. Now it is a loss often to the dealerships. So that's why these vehicles that are sitting on the car lots for a significant amount of time represent some of the biggest opportunities for you as the buyer. Look for those vehicles that have been sitting there for over 90 days. We know a lot of Stellantis products are up at 150 days supply. The industry average right now is between that 72 and 76 days supply. But if you're seeing these manufacturers with vehicles that are 150, 200 days supply, and when I checked CarGurus last, I actually found numerous vehicles with 500, 600 days of day supply. That's right, they've literally been sitting there for two years or more. So those are the vehicles 
there's such immense deals and opportunities for a buyer to get a slightly older brand new vehicle. If you're okay in taking the, not such the latest flavor, now remember, the push is real. These vehicles can't sit on the lots forever. Even if the auction's not buying them, the salespeople aren't pushing them, other vendors or manufacturers of the same kind aren't buying them, and they're just not moving. What's next? Well, they can't sit there forever. And now you have the manufacturers continually putting pressure on the individual dealers to take on the bulk of the next model year coming down the chute. This pressure is a constant and it exists. So there is this real pressure on the general managers to really have this in order and prioritize the sales of some of these new vehicles. And they might post them in other unconventional locations as a Hail Mary effort to try to move some of these vehicles. So another big problem exists, undercutting the next model year. As the manufacturers start sending the newest, latest and greatest model years with the latest technology and the drivetrains and style updates, they don't want to undercut a lot of those brand new releases with the undercutting and the gross discounts of the older model stock. For example, this is 2024, you don't want to go so low on the sale of a 24 when a 25 is coming in that might distract the buyers from buying that new 25 because ultimately that's the goal is to sell the new vehicle but in fact, in undercutting it so low on the 24s, they might go right to the 24s and skip the 25s altogether. So there's this a little bit of cat and mouse game. One of the other levers that these manufacturers can pull are sending these right to the car graveyards. Now, if a lot of the incentives to the employees are not picked up, and often these manufacturers are doing that, sending out bulletins, incentives to workers and staff and members of the organization, not necessarily at the dealer network, they give these big incentives. Employee discounts is almost a last ditch effort for the manufacturer to start to pitch some of their older stock that's not selling. A barring an, all of that failure with no discount, no sales to staff, auctions are failing, Joe Public's not buying, and the vehicle's just sitting there for an immense amount of time, it winds up in the car graveyard and ready for shipment. Now there's other opportunities to send to other maybe developing nations, other countries, and often they get sold to places like Mexico, Africa, and a lot of these vehicles are then moved, if they literally are not selling, can be pitched to other countries that might be interested in buying these at a massive discount. Because this is the last ditch effort to draw any kind of money or cash flow out of any one of those vehicles. So you have these huge and immense car graveyards with vehicles piling up all over the world where they're rusting out, rotting out, and becoming literally worthless. So hitting the end of the road for a lot of these manufacturers and dealers not selling that vehicle, there's nowhere else to go. And unfortunately, it's almost a sad thing to see they end up often dismantling or even wrecking some of these cars. Usually dismantling, they can salvage parts, maybe engine parts, body panels, put some new old stock back on shelves or back in the supply chain so that they can sell them back to the customer as through the parts department. So there is sometimes way to extract some of that extra revenue or cash flow out of that car, but it's all at an extreme loss to the manufacturer as well as the dealer. So as you can see, there's zero incentive for these dealers to hold on to these vehicles for any more than 60 days or 90 days is the optimal low time frame. Beyond that, things start getting desperate. And if you have an opportunity to understand how long that vehicle's been sitting on the lot, and if you've been visiting the same car lot for a month, two, three months, and you notice that little green machine parked in the back 40, and it's been there all summer, you know that's probably a great opportunity to walk into the dealership and make yourself a phenomenal deal and get last and get yesterday's news. And instead of making some of the stupidest mistakes and becoming broke like many customers do, get yourself one of these highly incentivized vehicles. But check that out. Some of the biggest mistakes buyers are doing that are costing them dearly. Hope to see each and every one in the next one. We'll see you real soon.